Hello and welcome to the Stalls ID Direct video tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to use the Stalls ID Direct 12 Stitch Pro software to create an overlap split front sew file. An overlap split front is a split design that overlaps in the middle part of the placket. To start off, I'm going to import my file. The file I created was in Corel Draw and I export it as a PLT format. So I'm simply going to select File and Import, browse to the PLT file and select Open. So now I have my file on my screen and as you can see I have it in three separate colors. I have the left side, the right side, and then I actually have a little part of the design that I created in Corel to create a marrowed edge right on the edge of the placket on the jersey. That's that nice satin, that thick satin stitch that's right on the edge that you can make it the same color as the twill. So in Corel Draw to do that, I actually just had my design, my left and my right side, and I just drew a line right down the edge. And I actually used the intersect tool. So if you select your right side of your design, because this is on a men's garment, so it's going to be on the right, the part with the marrowed edge. I'm going to hold my shift key down on my keyboard and then select the line and select intersect. And what that does is it creates a duplicate of just the actual part that's overlapping that it actually touched. So that is what I'm going to use to create the marrowed edge in Twill Stitch Pro. A split front is actually going to end up being two separate hoops. So you're going to have to hoop the left side of the jersey and then the right side and you're going to have to sew them. So I'm actually going to make two separate sew files, one for the left and one for the right. Because I made this design in Corel, I just exported it as one PLT file so I can just bring in that one file. It's easier that way. But I'm actually going to split them up now. So I want to take this left side and I'm just going to right click and cut, bring up a new page, and then paste it in this page. So now I can work on one design at a time. Now in my sequence view here, my, my actual mirrored edge line that I'm going to create that on is first and I want that to sew last. So I'm just going to click and drag that to the bottom of the sequence. Now because this is applique, I need a placement stitch so I know where to lay my twill down. So I'm going to select this layer and copy and paste it. I just right click to copy and paste or you can use your copy and paste shortcut up here. Now I have a duplicate underneath the original art, so I'm going to just right click my mouse on a different color on my color bar. So now I have a series of three different layers in my sequence view. So my very first layer, I can right click and convert it to a run, which is a series of straight stitches the exact size of the design. Then the second layer, I can right click and convert it to a tackle twill or a zigzag stitch. And then within the properties, if I right click and select properties, I can get to the properties of that tackle twill stitch and I can change my stitch width and my inset percentage, which is the amount of stitch on the twill versus the garment, anywhere from 70 to 85 percent is average. My placement line I don't need because I use the copy paste method and my tack down line I'm not going to use because this is simply just a zigzag stitch. If I were going to use a satin stitch, most likely I'd want to tack down, therefore because it's a heavy stitch and nothing is going to um, shift on me while it's stitching. So if I select apply, I may have, depending on if the file came in, a certain way. Uh, sometimes platter files will come in broken up as individual objects so the actual inside cavities of letters may be on the incorrect side so what I'll do is I'll just go through and find out which one those are. So I have this one. Okay. So I'm just going to hold my shift key down while I select the cavities of the individual letters that are actually on the wrong side. And then within the properties I'm going to change it to 20% inset versus 80 and that was a quick fix to take care of that. Looks like I accidentally grabbed this particular part of the design so I'm going to change that by selecting it and just quickly correcting it. Okay. All right. So now we have the run stitch done, the actual twill, the stitch for the twill to be sewn down on. Now the last run in the placement stitch, I do want the frame to come out so I know 
so I can have room to lay my, my tool down after the stitches. So I'm just going to go into the properties of that stitch. So I just right click on the last run and go to properties. Select my commands tab and my end command is going to be a frame out. So my hoop's going to come out, therefore I have enough room to lay down the twill so my fingers aren't in the way and the needles. Okay, so we're done with that and we're done with that one. Now we're just going to do the marrowed edge. So I'm going to select that layer, right click my mouse, convert it to a steel stitch. If you've updated 12 Stitch Pro, you have the latest version and you'll have that option for just that steel stitch, which is just a basic satin stitch. It has no option for placement or tack or anything. It's just a basic satin stitch. Um, if I want to look at it in 3D view, I can. And if I wanted to get real fancy, I actually could get in here and use my stitch tool and I could start to um, maneuver the stitches. That's pretty simple. Okay, so we have this side done, so I'm going to go to the next side. So I just select on the next page, and I'm just going to right click and copy and paste, or copy and use my shortcut paste here. Right click my mouse on a different color, so I have a di different layer. Select it, convert the very first layer to a run stitch for my placement. Select the very last run of my placement. Right click, go to properties, so I can select my end command for that run to frame out so I have room to lay the twill down. And you can change where you want your frame out to be in the general options. If you go to tools and general options, select your machine tab and you can change your frame out location to be top, bottom, left, or right. Okay, and then this final layer that's going to sew the twill, right click, select tackle twill, convert to tackle twill and then within the properties I can change my stitch width and my inset percentage and I can fix any of those cavities if I need to. Alright, so we have the left side done, we have the right side done, so now we can save the files. I'm going to go to File and Save As and name it, I'm going to say dcats slash right. And if you wanted to save it as this STH, that's kind of like a master file. Um, if you needed to make any changes or edit it, you'd want to save a backup or a master copy as an STH format. Um, but because once you save it into DST, the program is not going to recognize the initial commands like frame out or the stitch type. You won't be able to convert it from a zigzag to a satin. So you might want to save a master copy. But um, for my embroidery machine, I need it to be a DST format. So I'm going to choose that, browse to where I want to save it in my computer, and select save. And I would do the same for the right side. So a basic overview was just to bring in the file, uh, break it up to two separate pages, a left side and a right side, do the copy-paste method for the, the layer itself so you can create a placement stitch first, then the stitch type to stitch the twill down, um, as well as the marrowed edge for the side that is going to be right up to the edge of the placket. And then keep in mind that you most likely want to frame out so that is on the last run of the placement stitch. Thank you for watching. This concludes this video tutorial.